For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Matt Money Shot. Sniffing at the band sheets as always. A couple of weeks back, I told you guys about a brand new defense that I'm using out of the Big Nickel Over G. And I said in that video that if you guys want to see a full breakdown of this particular uh, defense, this is pretty much the only defense I use. And that you can tell based off of how many times I've called plays like the SS Blitz 3 almost a thousand times. Uh, so today I'm going to give you guys the full breakdown. It's a five play breakdown. I have all five of these plays in my audibles. We'll go ahead, we'll go over to that real quick. The play that I showed you guys, I think it was a week or so ago, was the cover six invert, so I'll go over that again. The cover four quarters, which is probably my favorite run defense, the cover six trap, which is really just a play that I use to mix in uh, to try to um, you know, give my opponent some new looks. And then the SS Blitz 2 and the SS Blitz 3, which I just showed you. So that's pretty much the five plays. That's how I keep my audibles. I use the SS Blitz 3 the most, so that's going to be the actual fifth play that I keep in my audible. Before I get into that, I'm going to show you guys substitutions, and I'm also going to show you guys my coaching adjustments. Now, for coaching adjustments, I typically put match on because the majority of these defenses are all natural matching defenses. They all do a pretty good job. Um, although I do override my flats quite a bit, but I don't actually set them to anything. Uh, the only other thing that I put is I auto align the base, but that's pretty much it. I mean, I like to put my option defense in. You know, I put these all to conservative, but that's not really that important. As far as substitutions go, I typically have my fastest cornerback here because I want that speed on the blitz. The play that I run the most is the SS Blitz 2 and 3, so I want that speed on the blitz. So basically, Isaiah Rogers is the fastest cornerback I have here, so I'm going to put him there. Then I basically just load up the box with safeties because you want good coverage ability. At the moment, there is no downside to doing this. I typically use your Tristan McCollum because I've made videos about how much of a beast that guy is. So I'll put Reed Blankenship in the box next to me. But this is pretty much the uh, setup here. That's it. We're going to go ahead. We're going to pick the play, the SS Blitz 3, because this is the one that I run the most. This particular defensive scheme can be found in my Raiders, Chiefs, and custom defensive ebooks. So if you guys want more help, you can download these or any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top end comment. So the base setup for this play is going to be really simple. This 3 rack hooks going to be my user. Uh, to set up the play, all I'm going to do is hit wire triangle, then down the left stick to press. And you'll notice that the cornerbacks come down, uh, which is something I don't really want because, you know, a simple fade from a fast receiver can beat these cornerbacks and press. So after that, I'm going to wire triangle, then base align. And this will drop the cornerbacks back, but it will leave the safeties down, which is typically what I want. Now, in this look here, the blitzing cornerback came out, which can happen sometimes. He only, only stays out here if there's a receiver out here. Since there's not a receiver out here, I have to manually move him back. But I want him to stay out there because that's going to be where the pressure comes from. After that, I just got to pinch the defensive line by hanging the D-pad to the left and down and bring this guy down over the uh, center. Enough that this green bar pops up above his head. When this green bar pops up above his head, it means that I'm being targeted by the lineman, which is what I want. My hope is that there's only five blocking linemen and they'll target me, meaning that the cornerback will get him free. That's the idea, which works out very well. Other than that, I also like the hard flat a lot, but this is the part that's really up to you. If you want to leave it, uh, say it's third and long, you're going to want to leave it as is. But if it's first and 10, I pretty much hard flat every single time. First and 10, third and short. At most situations, I'm hard flatting to protect underneath the dropping cornerbacks because that's probably the biggest weakness that I can't control. Other than that, the biggest weakness on this play is going to be above the hard flat. Like I said, it's up to me if I want a hard flat or not. The last step to this play is going to be what I use her because once the play starts, I'm going to drop back and I'm going to cover uh, this area. But the number one area, I mean, number one, there's no receiver. There's three receivers over here, so I'm going to have to jump over here. 
But there's no real receiver that can get up this cover three seam because this is probably the biggest weakness other than the tight end. If the tight end's on the streak, i got to watch that. But I know where the weakness is. The weakness of this defense is right up this cover three seam. So I have the ability to jump that. I could always put the hard flat to man to that tight end too. Say my opponent's attacking from this look. On the other side, the cover three seam is also a little bit vulnerable. So I could do the same thing. I could hard flat or I could uh, man blank and ship to the wide receiver if somebody's attacking up that cover three seam. I have options. But at the end of the day, um, it's I know where the weaknesses are so I can use them to cover them up. I'll go out and run this one time in hopes that the blitz gets in. Uh, as you can see, it does as we get a, an inaccurate throw because of the pressure. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a very consistent no. blitz. Uh, I didn't really get to see what happened, so we'll have to go back and look. But I can't tell if the uh, running back stayed home to block or not. It looks like he was in a check and release. It did look like we had a 5-on-5, five five, but that's the whole point. The, the center, once he realizes I'm not blitzing, he's going to rotate over just to double-team that guard. And they never really switch over enough to pick up this cornerback, which is really the idea. The cornerback here is pretty much going to come in free every single time, which is why I like this defense is Patrick Mahomes still gets the ball off, but he obviously can't get a, a very good throw. Now, if your opponent starts to attack these weaknesses to the point where um, they might have they might have the cover threes number you can do the exact same blitz from the ss blitz too so this look here is going to be the exact same um, we're going to press we're going to we're going to baseline to back off those guys although i actually like this guy i like blanket to be out where he belongs on the uh in the action spot uh and then you can see you're going to have the exact same pressure although your opponent might be trying for the same weaknesses. He might be trying to have a cover three seam that's not there anymore. He might be trying to get outside above the soft squats that won't work the same way. If he tries to hit a corner out against his defense, it's not going to be nearly as effective. And you can see how you can just confuse your opponent that way. He gets a few yards, but not much. Now, another defense I like to run out of this is the cover six trap. This here is a matching defense on both sides. So I really don't like to make a lot of adjustments other than, uh, you know, just moving that guy out so he can get into the action a little bit more. Um, if I think it's going to be a pass, I'll spread. If I think it's going to be a run, I'll pinch because the run defense there is still really good. And you can see how the coverage is tight. It's not necessarily going to be uh, shut down. If you have a knockout there, obviously it would have worked. But uh, it's something, you know, this is just a good defense to run. This is something, like I said, I don't make any adjustments with this because I find that this here is a very good matching style defense. You can see it shuts down the RPO very well. He gets a, what looks like a two-yard loss on that play. Um, this is probably my best RPO defense as well, my best natural RPO defense. But ultimately, this is something I just throw in there to uh, to confuse my opponents. And then I also have the cover six invert, which this particular defense is probably even better when it comes to confusing opponents because it's such a unique look. It does a really good job on, on corner routes and stuff like that as well. Um, I do make an adjustment when I do this. I like to put this guy into a middle third. And this guy here, I mentioned in the last video I made about this, he's really like the... Um, I can do whatever I want with him. I can put him on a hard flat, which I like to do a lot of times because that's something where underneath this dropping uh, cornerback will be vulnerable since there's just a curl flat over there. And then this will lead me to just use her this entire side by myself, which is fine because ultimately I'm just going to use her up the middle anyway. Uh, as you can see, I got faked out by that by that uh, play action. But like I said, this here, this is a defense. I've made plenty of gameplays about this video, about this defense as well. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that. I just made a whole video on that. Uh, but the cover six invert, all you really have to do is put this safety this uh, into a middle third to take away. And there's no, there's not a lot of deep pass plays that are going to beat this defense. Uh, but like I said, the only other real adjustment I make as well is the hard flat this guy. And then I just have to use her, uh, the center once again because this will take away that outside. That, that entire side over there is going to be taken away. Uh, and then you can see how you know we do have um, – it's not the best run defense. The best run defense is definitely cover four. So I'll keep that in mind. Cover four, obviously, the safeties will help out. Um, with run defense more, which is why it's important to have them down in the box. So that really just depends on, on how you expect uh, your opponent to play. And I haven't been pinching the defensive line either. If you pinch the defensive line on every single play, you'll get much better run defense. But obviously the pass defense will be worse. As you can see right there, we're not getting anything when I actually pinch the defensive line. It's much easier to, to, to defend the run with a pinched defensive line. You just won't get much of a pass rush. If you spread the defensive line, you'll get a better pass rush, but you'll give up more uh, run plays. It's really that simple. So I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see uh, more defensive breakdowns, more full defensive breakdowns like this, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, if you want to watch gameplay of any of the defenses I just showed you, I'll have them popping up on screen. So just click the links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.